So as many of you may know, the ATF has decided to back off and shelve their plans to ban the green tip 223556 and whatever, the M855 and SS103 or whatever the hell, the green tip stuff. And, you know, there's tons of videos out there explaining what all that was about, but uh, it was really a, a bunch to do about nothing. Um, backdoor gun control. Nothing more, nothing less. And, you know, I have, I have some theories on why the ATF decided that they're going to go after that particular caliber. And a lot of people will speculate that it's just Obama, you know, trying to, uh, you know, ban the ammunition. If they can't ban the guns, ban the ammunition. Um, yeah, that's been done before. It didn't turn out too well for the British. But uh, fortunately, not enough people got uh, got pissed off and and. Uh, you know, there's a channel here on on uh, on YouTube. If uh, if you're interested in in following this particular person, this this chick, it's Are You Ready for It News? Are you ready for it news? I'll put a link down in the description. She's foul mouthed. Uh, she's a veteran. She she did her. She did uh, a tour in Iraq or something like that. But uh, she has made it her mission in life to track what the government's doing legislatively. So I subscribed to her because she's she was one of the first pre, first people to to inform me about uh, ATF's intention to ban that ammunition. And it didn't take too long after that, maybe a day or two, when you know a lot of the gun channels here on YouTube were were making videos about it. I I, I uh, signed the petition. Some people would say, "Oh, it's pretty dumb." Now they got a record. Well, they got a record of it anyway. So they got a record of all my ammo purchases and all my my gun purchases. They there's a there's a tracker. To, you know, they already know. So signing a petition isn't going to change anything. But I do have a theory as to why the ATF decided to do that. And it, and it stems, it might be total, total rubbish, but bear with me for a minute. The ATF is a government agency, and they don't like to look like chumps. This all came about shortly after they made a ruling on the SIG brace. And the controversy over the SIG brace came about when somebody was asked, wrote the letter to the ATF asking if it was legal to shoulder a SIG brace. And it all came down to intent. What was your intention? If you were intending to build a short barrel rifle and get around paying a $200 tax stamp for a short barrel rifle, because you can own a short barrel rifle. You just got to pay two. You got to pay the ATF two hundred dollars. They want their money. But if you buy an AR pistol and put a Sig brace on it, you can essentially have a short barrel rifle without paying the tax stamp. Well, th there was some controversy about whether or not that Sig brace was legal to shoulder like a stock. It, it, it was designed to fit over your forearm so that you could shoot an AR pistol with some accuracy, you know, because it was, then it was attached to your forearm and it wasn't flopping around, you know. Anyway. But the design of the SIG brace lends itself to be shouldered like a, like a rifle stock. And now there's no law that says you can't shoulder a pistol. In fact, um, 1911 is during World War II. Some of them were outfitted with an optional butt stock. So you can shoulder your 1911. Uh, there's, you know, there's uh, stock kits for Glocks. Probably other pistols as well. There's no law that says you can't shoulder a pistol. But the SIG brace allowed you to shoulder an AR pistol like a rifle. 
And so I think some people thought, well, that's cool. I can build myself a short barrel rifle called a pistol. I think that's where the, 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 the ATF got a little bit bent because they knew people were going to do this. Otherwise, why would people write and ask, is it legal to shoulder a SIG brace? And, and, they, and they came back originally with, with a ruling that said it depends on your intent. If you intended to uh, violate the FFA and build a short barrel rifle by using a SIG brace for a stock, then no, it's not legal. If you have a pistol, and then they changed their mind. They decided that. You know, after we considered it for a while, I think it's just it's just easier just to to make it illegal to uh, shoulder sig brace. So if you got a sig brace on your air pistol, you can put it up to your cheek, but as soon as it touches your shoulder, you've committed a felony, and you could lose your gun rights for life by shouldering an AR pistol with a sig brace on it. Is that stupid? Or is that stupid? Well, if you go back to the AT, uh, to the uh, to the uh, Federal Firearms Act, nineteen eighty six. Coincidentally, the same Federal Firearms Act that made uh, automatic rifles manufactured after March nineteenth or May nineteenth, nineteen eighty six, illegal for civilian zone. Yeah, that one. The, the law that uh, created a, a supply and demand that makes Tommy guns that are fully automatic fetch up to 50 grand. Yeah, that one. Um, that same, uh, that same year, they, you know, remember, if you're old, if you're old fucker like me, uh, you remember the, 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 uh, the early days of rap when, I think it was Ice T or something made a, made a, a, wrote a song called Cop Killers. Referencing uh, Teflon coated bullets to kill cops. Yeah. Well, that's where that legislation came from. You know, they made it illegal for armor penetrating. It was the Law Enforcement Protection Act or some stupid thing like that. They made it illegal for armor piercing rounds in pistol calibers. You stay with me here. They outlawed the possession. Uh, to, for the general population to own and use armor-piercing ammo in pistol calibers. Rifle calibers were made exempt because it doesn't need to be armor-piercing to penetrate level 2 body armor. Any rifle round will penetrate level 2 body armor. And that was the big controversy over this uh, green tip ammo ban because they were saying that it you know, the reason that they're thinking about making it illegal is because it can it can compromise level two body armor. Well, so is my wolf. <laughs> my wolf ammo. It doesn't need to be green tip ammo. Any 223 ammo is going to compromise body armor. In fact, Tim over at uh, Military Arms Channel did a ballistics gel test using... Uh, Green tip and or just rifle rifle ammunition to see if it could compromise. And two two three shot right through the right through the body armor and all the way through the ballistic block. So yeah, that you know it was an attempt. Many would say that it, it was ATF. It was the ATF attempting to solve a problem that didn't exist. I think it was the ATF just trying to take out their frustrations over all this bullshit over the the AR rifle platform. Because people are building them uh, into rifle, uh, into pistols now, and now that it's an AR pistol, now that means two, two, three, and five, five, six are potential pistol calibers. If you did your part and you and you made your your uh, intentions known to the ATF, congratulations, the fight's not over yet. We need to be a little more diligent. Because now the Supreme Court has ruled that they don't need to put it up to public opinion anymore. They can just make a rule change. Even though they don't have the authority to make law, they can make rule changes. Which will end you in jail just as quick as if it was a law. So, stay vigilant. Stay informed. Stay free. Till next time. 
This is Diesel Freak over here in Pahrump, Nevada. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet. Comment in the comment section if you're so inclined. Until next time, you have yourself a splendid day. I need to get back to priming all these cases. Sorry. Bye-bye.